this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 327 where I go over the top 10 new cards in Commander 2016. Crazy good stuff out there. I'm super happy about this product. I like that Wizards is designing for the casual market and putting great stuff into the decks. Honorable mentions here. I already talked about Silas and Bria in an earlier video. They are both great Prismatic Geoscope is the type of card that I want in a five color commander deck that goes and gets basic lands. This is a cool casual ramp card. And Fairy Artisans, if I've got a way to sacrifice creatures, this is going to be a crazy good card. Attrition is the card that comes to mind for me. Anything that I can do with those extra creatures before they die, I can do amazing things with this card. On the number 10 spot here, I've got Ash Barrens. This is a wonderful basic land cycling card, and I didn't think that that was something I would probably ever say. First, it produces colorless mana, which is now more important that there's Eldrazi out there. Second, it's only one to basic land cycle. Number three on this list, it combos so well with Life from the Loam. Add this to your deck with fetch lands. You've got another card that you can recur from the graveyard with life from the loan. Do wonderful color fixing and still play back to basics. Woohoo! Make lots of friends. In the number nine spot here, I've got one of the few cards that I've been considering as a sideboard option in death and taxes. I really like this card generally because it allows you this political ability to give other people plus one plus ones and not get attacked, but it also stops your creatures from dying to the crazy good hate cards that are out there. Massacre Worm crushes in EDH. Massacre crushes in Legacy. This is a really fun card that I'm trying as a one of in my sideboards for Legacy, although I might be crazy. The number eight spot here, we've got Cruel Entertainment. Ooh, Mind Slaver, very mean card. Cruel Entertainment, make two other people take each other's turns. Now that is fun. This is the type of card that will never see competitive play, but it is crazy good for EDH and a casual environment. Once we move on this list, we're going to hit a few more spiky cards, but this has got to be my number one favorite for flavor, awesome art, and just does something fun in the game. Number seven spot here, I've got some of the basic land cycling cards, my favorite being Grave Upheaval. If you're playing a budget deck, it's really important to get your land. I see more budget decks lose because of a bad mana base than anything else. And these basic land cycling cards help a lot there. And if it fits into the theme of your deck, even better. Grave Upheaval is a wonderful reanimation spell with land cycling and haste on it. It's a little bit expensive at the six casting cost, but well worth it in EDH. Each of these basic land cycling cards are definitely worth playing, especially in budget decks. Number six spot here, we've got one of the spikier cards out there. It's five casting costs, but it doubles the number of counters on any target permanent. How crazy good is that? Play this with Planeswalkers and do amazing stuff. This is going into my five color Planeswalker deck. Number five spot here, I've got Conquester's Flail. Woohoo! Grand Abolisher! on a creature and you get some plus one plus ones this is exactly what i want to stop blue players from doing crazy stuff on my turn i am really happy about this it's not as strong as grand abolisher which stops activated abilities also which is the absolute best of the white hate bears for stopping blue players on your turn it's multicolor. it's only two casting costs two to equip I would put it in a Voltron deck and watch blue players cry. Number four spot here, we've got Coiling Oracle on a creature for four. You can do this again and again and again. Scry, then reveal the top card. It's better than Coiling Oracle's ability. For a two casting cost commander, this is wonderful. Very, very happy about it. I would play it definitely with Rings of Brightheart. Control Magic has always been one of my absolute favorite cards. Grip of Fyreshus is crazy good, especially against Voltron decks. Voltron decks are very popular in my area. I can't wait 
to play this at instant speed, grabbing the batter skull off of somebody else's creature and then blocking their creature, killing their creature and keeping their batter skull. The other nice thing about this card is that it targets the equipment and most equipment is colorless. So even though Sword of Fire and Ice may have protection from your entire freaking blue deck, doesn't have protection itself. It just gives protection to the creature so you can still steal it. Uh, look at that awesome flavor text and artwork. Even your blade knows who will triumph here. And it's stealing the sword of body and mind. What more can you ask for? Really, really cool. Yidris Maelstorm Wielder comes in at number two. Crazy cool card. I'm a huge fan of Maelstorm Wanderer. I really, really like Bloodbraid Elf. And I see how these cards are going to be best friends in a deck. Maelstrom Wielder was the last of the commanders to be revealed and one of the coolest commanders. This ability, Cascade, for the rest of the spells you cast this turn, crazy fun stuff or combo stuff. This is a casual and spike favorite commander all wrapped up in one with four different colors of mana. I'm super happy about these four color commanders if you hadn't been able to tell. One other note on this particular set, they did such a good job in adding foil commanders. Every one of these sets is going to have four regular sized foil commanders. That brings up the value of these sets significantly. Long term, if they print these somewhere else, these foil versions are going to be what people want. I like this trend from Wizards of adding a little more value to these decks, giving people awesome foil commanders. This is wonderful from a financial perspective and very cool. The artwork on several of these commanders looks like it's gonna be amazing in foil. Number one spot here, Magus of the Will, bringing forth the power of the grave to crush your friends. Yagmas Will is one of the most broken cards ever printed. It is incredibly good. Magus of the Will is a creature version of Yagmas Will. I am super happy to see this. The artwork was clearly inspired by the original artwork. Well done. This is going to be a fun card. I would play this specifically in a reanimator deck that also has haste. If you've got anger sitting in the graveyard, you're going to be able to cast this and use it on the same turn. Big announcement here for you guys. I'm going to have a separate video on this entirely, but chess.com is now a sponsor of Mythic MTG Tech. As you guys know, I do chess videos mostly over at my other YouTube channel, Sartorus. So if you want to see those over there, please subscribe. But chess has been a huge influence on me competitively. It has taught me how to study things with a very, very critical eye. If you want to play against me, at chess, please head over to chess.com, use the referral link there, I would greatly appreciate it, to search through Magic's history and find great cards to play, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon, supporting the channel. Until next time, choose the cards wisely. Grip of Firesis? Grip of Firesis? 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 Where do they come up with these names? Which sword is that? Oh, come on. I knew this like a minute ago. The number two spot here, we've got Maelstrom Wheel. Yidris. Maelstrom Wielder. Ooh, I can't pronounce anything today, can I? Maelstrom Wielder. Maelstrom Wielder.